It's a staple of the political media. Any noteworthy election is followed by an instant search for greater meaning. Case in point, the special U.S. Senate election in Alabama, where a surprise Democratic victory prompted some questionable conclusions. Adam Riley has more. Doug Jones. Doug Jones is the winner. After Doug Jones squeaked past Roy Moore, one question was on everyone's mind. What happened last night? And across the media, one answer popped up again and again. Donald Trump lost badly. This race in Alabama was 100 percent a referendum on President Trump. There's a reckoning coming for President Trump. One top Trump advisor told me this White House has the worst political operation in two generations. But even if it does, saying Jones won and Trump lost is overblown. After all, Roy Moore gave new meaning to the term baggage. This is uh, probably the worst Republican candidate that they have fielded in forever. And not just because of multiple credible allegations of troubling sexual misconduct. He stayed off the trail. When he did show up or his spokesman or even his wife showed up, they kept saying things that kind of made it worse. Things like this. One of our attorneys is a Jew. <laughs> also losing big, former Trump strategist Steve Bannon, who championed more and saw his reputation take a huge hit. This guy does not belong on the national stage. Which isn't to say what happened in Alabama isn't part of a growing anti-Trump backlash. Still, putting it all on the president isn't right. I totally agree with that. You know, this is, Jen, to me, an extension of what reporters have done, not just with this administration, but every single thing that happens in the world, in the United States, is on the back of whoever is currently the president of the United States. But this actually attaches uh, a new burden because... He wasn't running in Alabama. He supported the guy, but he wasn't running. It wasn't a referendum on Trump, not in my vision anyway. Well, and the guy was such a horrible candidate. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Republican. There's no way I would have voted for him. And I know many Trump voters who would not have voted for this character. So I don't know what kind of conclusions you can draw from, from this particular election. It certainly is, though, the propensity of the political press to ascribe these qualities. As oh, we... they love to come up with a narrative for these things. And in fact, President Trump's approval rating is only 48 percent in Alabama, which is surprisingly low. But I don't think there's any question that if the Republicans had managed to nominate a candidate who hadn't been incredibly accused of child molestation, uh, then a Republican almost certainly would have won that election. Well, more to the point, not only uh, child molestation, but also he reveres the good old days of slavery. Yes. Come on, there was two points difference. People, get a grip. No. I, you know, I think we're all going to agree with each other. No, of course, it was no referendum on President Trump. He's, you know, got up, flipped off the Teflon and kept going. You know, I mean, what, what are we talking about here? No, no. But the surprising thing is that, that he even need, felt a need to weigh in on this race. There was nothing there for him to gain unless they really did think they were going to win that race. So I do think there is a, there is a piece of this where uh, despite the, the, this historically bad candidate, why would you get involved in that? They, they went out of their way to, ca to campaign outside right. of the, of the, of the well, area. Well, he was worried about then, the balance of the Senate, period. Yeah, but, but that, but at what because expense? Because he can. At, I mean, There's at what some expense? people that aren't worth yeah. supporting. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, the president has, you know, feels very good about his ability to sway things, but it doesn't necessarily impact him in the end. That's the point we're making here mm -hmm. in terms of what was incorrect about the assessment in the end. So he, he could get in, so he weighed in. I also got the impression know. watching that night, and I might have had a little of that in my heart too, but it's sort of like a gleeful reporting mm -hmm. when this thing clearly turned around because it was a little bit back and forth. There was some tension uh, mm. over the course of the evening. And when it looked like it was going for Doug Jones, it, it appeared to me anyway that the, the media was delighted. Mm. Sure Although the, the, the <laughs> New York Times needle made a comeback and it performed a lot better than it did uh, in the uh, on election night 2016. Why? That worked that night. Uh, well, no, it actually did work, but because it initially began with such a huge lead for Clinton, oh, it, it looked crazy watching it go through the night. What was interesting about this is that there was a time when uh, Moore was ahead by a good five points, and the New York Times needle was saying that actually uh, Doug Jones is going to win, and it turned out to be correct. It was a very different experience watching it on the networks as it was watching it on Twitter, uh, yeah. where yeah. The, t the, the New York Times folks were well ahead of the networks up until probably about 9.30 at night when it started to turn. Yeah. Yeah.